Hello guys, welcome back. This is Dr. Anjit here. So today we are in the last chapter of uh, discussion of the images, and today will be the last of the. Hello guys. Of uh, the 10 p.m. MCQs as well. Fine. So like a farewell, right? So hopefully we'll be uh, having more and more questions today, and uh, hopefully it will be easy questions to boost up your mood. By 10 p.m. we'll be meeting you with the last final set of 30 MCQs, and let's see if it's. If all of us score 100% for everything, it will be happy for me, fine. Good evening, Durai. Good evening, Varun. Good evening, Nandi. Fine. So today we are going to see about breast and CNS. Right? Those are the things for us today. Okay. Uh, maybe intermittently, Durai. I will tell you what to do. We will give a break for some time from pathology. Okay. And then we will uh, we'll come back. Right? We will come back for sure. Fine. So we are going to uh, see about breast pattern, breast first and then a little bit about CNS because CNS I am sure you know everything about CNS tumors I am just going to add a few more things uh, which I wanted to emphasize on CNS tumors right so what is this tell me what is this uh, today is a free will whatever comes to your mind you are going to say no inhibitions right so what do you think this is this is obviously from breast panachyma okay this isn't we, we always start with norm, normal, right? This is a normal breast parenchyma, right? So I have your duct asana unit. This, I call it a TDLU, terminal duct lobular unit, right? That's where it's both of them. It's lobule plus duct intermixed with it. It's a terminal duct lobular unit. Almost every pathogenesis from uh, in the breast parenchyma happens in terminal duct lobular unit. We have few stromal pathologies, which are like your fibroadenoma fillots, but most of the epithelial abnormalities happens from your TDLU, fine? So when I say a TDLU, I said this for when we are discussing uh, prostate as well. Prostate and breast has few similarities. One of them, when you look at this, there will be double layering uh, for almost every normal TDLU. Right? I have a single layering inside, I will have an outer layer as well. I will have a single layer inside, here I have one layer, here I have one layer. Right? I will have dual layering, one epithelial layer, one myopithelial layer, that will be there. When the, till I am seeing the double layering, I will be more than happy because this double layering is like equivalent to my invasion of basement membrane for a square muscle carcinoma. When the double layer is gone, I'll be saying that, okay, this is malignant, right? That's my uh, cutoff for keeping malignancy in case of a breast, okay? So you saw this, this is a normal TDLU. Whatever, uh, whatever thoughts comes to you on this image, tell me. We're just going to see few images, uh, almost similar images which have been seen in Robbins, right? What comes to your mind when you see here? Which is more? Just can you comment on saying which is more? That's that will be more than enough. Definitely, one thing is more is my epithelial cells, right? My epithelial cells are definitely, definitely more, right? So, am I right in saying that though my epithelial cells more? See, this is the one duct lobular unit, right? This how tiny it was, and it's become this big. So, definitely, I'm having more amount of epithelium. That's there, right? So, am I right in saying that the myoepithelial layer here is intact or not? I have marked as well the corners can you see the myoptilial layer all over you can see the myoptilial layer right you can see the myoptilial layer all over so my myoptilial layer i'm writing me for myoptilial layer is intact here but i'm having lots of epithelium here i'm just going to call it an epithelial hyperplasia that's all this is just an epithelial hyperplasia okay we are going to see Quite a few lesions. Uh, if you remember your uh, surgery breast cancer uh, uh, pathogenesis or in your pathology breast cancer pathogenesis, you must have had few things like your uh, uh, radial scar or DCS has an um, DCS. I think it has an uh, seven to eight times the risk of an uh, later risk compared to a normal person. Your radial scar has some 1.5 to 2 percent proliferative breast disease, atypical ductal epithelial, which has 4 to 5 percent. Right. So we are going to see all those diseases today in the form of images this is a simple epithelial hyperplasia there's no atypia i can easily say there's no atypia here Com comfortable almost similar looking just an epithelial hyperplasia fine just to see how good we are in your microscopy tell me what cell is this if you want i'll zoom this you answer this cell i'll be more than happy that you are very very strong in images you will make no mistake in images what cell is this Any comments? Come on, perfect. Right, that's a neutrophil. Great, super. Right, that's a neutrophil. 
no question marks be confident it's a new truffle right it has nothing to do with this uh, diagnosis it will not change the diagnosis i want you to pick up the cells that's all if you can pick up the cells that will be more than enough you can diagnose almost every disease here right next image same here i want you to compare this also with my first image this always keep this this is my gold standard normal thing i want to compare this and this right so when you look at this what comes to your mind like uh, you you guys only said that the epithelium is more in the first uh, image right uh, the hyperplasia was there in the first image so what what is your thought on this image whatever comes to your mind you can say am i right in saying that the number of asini or the duct is more a little bit definitely i'm having more amount of duct and asini right that's one thing which can uh, with confidence i can say that right the second thing what are these 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 am i also right in saying that in between the duct and asini the duct asini i am having pink pink layering what is that myoptilium it's a very low power image i cannot i cannot comment on myoptilium on this i just want you to know what is a pink color we already know pink color means what okay perfect collagen collagen means i am going to have sclerosis right so all of you accept here i am having sclerosis here right and all of you also accepted that there is more number of duct as in a unit so can i call it adenosis more number of duct as in a unit adenosis yes so my diagnosis here is sclerosing adenosis fine simple right the simple one is sclerosing adenosis i'm having lots of ductus in a unit and i am having sclerosis that's what you you said as collagen perfectly right this is sclerosing adenosis you will be able to pick up the uh, diagnosis just with normal imaging find image findings fine here also myoepithelium will be intact only do not comment on myoepithelium on a low power image you will not be able to understand it fine it's a very simple diagnosis right it's sclerosing adenosis sclerosing adenosis is also one of the type of uh, duct lobular in abnormality i'll come when i compile everything i'll come to them okay look at this tell me here what is predominant here here fibrosis is predominant or your uh, duct as in a unit is pr predominant in this image i would say that here tell this definitely more amount of fibrosis right it's more amount of fibrosis predominant here i do have the duct as in a unit right tdlu is there Ne, right random name having tdlu okay here i am going to have more fibrosis and the fibrosis is radial so this is an radial scar or a radial sclerosing lesion fine it looks radial scar this is a problem for me on an um, imaging finding so i am having so much of scar tissue will it mimic your serous cir castrum of breast it will it's definitely a differential diagnosis on a mammogram a differential diagnosis for my on my imaging finding so i am going to take a biopsy my problem is see i'm having all these tdlu stuck up in the scar tissue so will the tdlu's architecture be distorted it will be distorted right so if it is distorted can i easily appreciate your myoepithelial layer it will not be it will be di bit difficult for me on a microscopy also i have lots of fibrosis i am not sure that this dysmoplasia induced fibrosis or a radial scar induced fibrosis plus i'm having a distorted tdlu like see such tiny tiny ones because of fibrosis so it'll be difficult for me when it's difficult for me obviously i want an ihc i do require an ihc now tell me what do you think what ihc you know for myoepithelial layer you need to know the ihc whenever i am ha having difficulty i will go for a special strain that's what i'm going to go for always fine whenever i'm having a doubt we go for special strain here this is going to be ihc myoepithelial layer ihc is p63 right p63 is better good ihc and we have one more collagen myosin heavy chain okay i personally prefer myosin heavy chain because and p63 also both of them looks better vimentin i will not go with uh, vijayaragon because the problem with vimentin is am i also right in saying that vimentin will be positive in the normal stroma also here here right it will be positive in all the stroma right because it's vimentin when it's positive in all the stroma it will be difficult for me to diagnose the condition that's all right okay that's the reason why mentin is also a marker of myopathy itself i won't prefer that because of that lesion okay great okay whatever comes to mind tell me what comes to mind here
uh, cyanthin myosin heavy chain is it's myosin that's all right anything with your myo say morphology whether it's cardiac muscle or skeletal muscle or smooth muscle or a myo epithelial cell will have it it gets mutated in the cardiomyopathy here i'm going to use it as a marker that's all perfect you can see i'll go with shashti's command that I, there is a papillary configuration to this lesion right i'm having such a huge duct here i'm having such a huge duct the duct is being invaded by a papillary structure right again i won't call it a dcs i'll just call it a papillary a duct papillary lesion that's all right uh, intraductal papilloma because it's inside the duct you can see the duct which is getting dilated how i am able to say it's ductus can you see the epithelial lining Though it's a very low power image, can you see a blue lining? You can, right? It's a corner, there's a lining, so it's a duct. Inside that it is gone, I'm having an intraductal papilloma. Okay? Right? So we saw four lesions here. All the four lesions, did we comment anywhere on your uh, um, pleomorphism, atypia, anything? We didn't comment on anything, right? But at the same time, do you accept that all these four lesions, whatever we have discussed till now, has proliferation? Definitely it has proliferation, right? All of them had proliferation, but there is no atypia in them, right? So all these four, your uh, ductal hyperplasia, that's the epithelial hyperplasia, your sclerosing adenosis, radial scar, and your intraductal papilloma. I'm going to group them under proliferative breast disease without atypia. Okay, I'm just going to call them without ATP. So when I say without ATP, it's still a proliferation. They do have a relative risk to become a cancer, like 1.5 to 2% relative risk to become a cancer. I didn't go with the fibrocystic disease. I didn't talk about the fibrocystic disease for the only reason that the relative risk for that is one. One relative risk is nothing. This is a bit elevated, fine. Uh, ductal hyperplasia is this, that's all. It's just an epithelial hyperplasia. It's more amount of uh, cells, right? Compared to my normal uh, TDLU, this is my normal TDLU. Compared to this, I'm definitely sure there are more number of cells, fine? Okay, so all these I'm going to call on proliferative disease without an ATP. I do have one more thing, one more group, proliferative disease. When I have without ATP, obviously there'll be something called with ATP. This is a dicey segment. I won't uh, want an undergraduate to know this. Just know the uh, names, you need not diagnose them. I have an atypical lobular hyperplasia and I have an atypical ductal hyperplasia. They are a bit difficult to diagnose. It's not required for undergraduates. Leave it to the pathologist to report that. Atypical ductal hyperplasia and atypical lobular hyperplasia comes in the second group. The first group has four proliferative lesions without ATP. This has proliferation disease with ATP. And here, my relative risk will definitely be a little bit elevated, four to five percentage. Four to five times relative risk will be there in these two categories, fine? Okay. The third is your famous DCIS. DCIS, if it is there, the malignancy is like almost certain. It's up to 10 times relative risk whenever I'm seeing a patient with the DCIS, right? So I'm showing, going to show you an image. You're going to tell me a diagnosis. What type of DCIS is this? Uh, DCIS. What type of DCIS is this? It's a classical one, right? So I'm having here necrosis. This is an comedo DCIS. It's DCIS, ductal carcinoma in situ. Don't look at the image, just answer what I'm going to say. When I say ductal carcinoma in situ, am I right in saying that this lesion also will have myoepithelial lining? Yes or no? It's in situ, will have myoepithelial lining. Maybe it's not a continuous epithelial lining, but I do have myoepithelial cells. Again, you can, can you see them? I'll just zoom a little bit. Can you see the myoepithelial layer? Yeah, I can, right? I can. I can. So definitely I do a marker, I'll be able to see them, right? I will have a myopathy layer in in-situ malignancy because it's same, my basement membrane is still intact. If this breaks, it can go outside. So here also I might require an IHC to differentiate a DCS from an IDC for sure. Okay, great. Tell me what comes to your mind when you look at this. It's a pattern. We have discussed lots about pattern. Tell me what pattern comes to your mind when you look at this. Uh, uh, okay, just hint might be, uh, we must have seen this in salivary gland. Any idea? Cribriform, perfect, right? It looks like cribriform. 
So when I say cribriform DCIS, as well as cribriform carcinoma of breast, both are possible. Okay. Cribriform disease and cribriform, your cookie cutter or sleeve pattern, sieve like pattern, whatever it is. Fine. When you say cribriform, we saw them in adenocystic carcinoma in the breast. Anything with cribriform in the salivary gland, they are good or bad, prognosis wise. And adenocystic carcinoma of the salivary gland, they don't have a better pro good prognosis, right? They are bad prognosis. Unlikely in breast carcinoma, when I see a cribriform DCAs, as well as a cribriform carcinoma of breast, you do have a good prognosis. Do remember this. Because it's like we have read cribriform carcinoma, adenocystic carcinoma lots of time in the salivary gland. We always think it's a bad prognosis. In breast, they do have a good prognosis. Do remember that, fine? It's the same microscopy pattern, but different diseases, so different prognosis, obviously, okay? What comes to your mind when you see this image? Again, we're just going to go with pattern. Let's see if possible, I want you to answer. Tell me the pattern. I'll just modify it a little bit. What comes to your mind when you look at this? Papillary? Great. I'm happy with papillary. So whenever you're going to see a papillary pattern, yeah, they look like a papillary. Obviously, there's undoubtedly they look like a papillary. Only one thing I wanted to add. Do you think the papillae here has a fibrovascular core? Can you see a fibrovascular core here? Maybe I'll zoom it out. Can you see fibrovascular core or you're seeing only cells here? You're seeing only cells here, right? I don't see a fibrovascular core. Yes, they are papillary, papillary pattern undoubtedly, but no fibrovascular core. But we know that whenever I am having a papillae, there should be a fibrovascular core, right? When there's no, I'm writing FE core for fibrovascular core, I'm going to call them a micropapillary pattern. Okay. Micropapillary pattern are common in two areas. One is in lung, other one is the breast. Wherever you see micropapillary pattern, they do have a very, very bad prognosis. Micropapillary DCS as well as micropapillary carcinoma of breast, they do have a bad prognosis. I don't call it pseudopapillary, we use the micropapillary, fine? They're like papillary-like projections. They do have a bad prognosis, do remember them, fine? So these are the different types of DCAs. One update I'm sure you guys know, LCAS. About LCAS, is it malignant? No, it has been removed to benign lesion, right? It's been removed to benign lesion. We don't... Uh, like the problem why it was removed to benign lesion is when we reported LCAs, they were kept on a follow up for a long time. Then some quite a few cases, they never become malignant. So unwantedly, there's a burden of repeated examination, repeated investigation and everything. Right. So we pushed into uh, benign lesions just to make sure that maybe uh, it's a lesion there for you. I can have a relaxed follow up maybe once in two years, three years or five years. Fine. It's just a benign lesion. It's not a malignant lesion as of now. Fine. It's a spotter diagnosis. It's definitely a spotter. It's a classical case of mucinous carcinoma of breast, right? Okay. It's a mucinous carcinoma of breast. Mucinous carcinoma of breast, good or bad prognosis? You can see this also came in the exam, I think, right? Almost everywhere I'm having mucin lakes and I'm having cancer cells floating in the mucin lakes. They do have a better prognosis compared to the other variants of them fine they are mucinous carcinoma of breast they do have a better prognosis okay see when i call something as idc we call it an infiltrating rectal carcinoma nos right not otherwise specified i do have few specific groups like when i call it micropapillary it's a specified uh, pattern here right when I call it a mucinous carcinoma, it's a specific pattern there. I can call it medullary carcinoma, metaplastic carcinoma, many things. Do remember two things in IDC special types. We have something called as a medullary carcinoma. And we have something called as a metaplastic carcinoma. These both have a very, very bad prognosis. Most of the time prognosis is based on your ERPR hertonio, right? Luminal A, B, C, uh, luminal A, B, hertonio and rich pat patterns only, fine. These, when I'm going to look on a microscopy itself, I can say that they have a very, very poor prognosis because both of these guys, most of the time, they'll be triple negative breast cancer. T and B, C stands for triple negative breast cancer. They'll be ER negative, PR negative and HER2 negative. And medullary carcinoma, especially, not always, when I have a microscopic pattern of a medullary carcinoma, what you will have it, like what mutation you will suspect. Microscopic medullary carcinoma, I might suspect a BRCA mutation. Again, again, I'm not saying always, it's like most of the BRCA1 mutated patients will have medullary carcinoma, 
but not all middle ear asthma will harbor BRCA1 mutation, right? If they do, there's an overlap, that's all, fine. Okay, great. So you have middle ear asthma and metaplastic asthma. Metaplasia, you know what is metaplasia. So when a uh, ductal TDLU becomes like a squamous epithelium, I'm going to call it metaplasia. When it becomes like a spindle shaped epithelium, I'm going to call it metaplasia. Or in other words, a poorly differentiated malignancy. Both of these cases are poorly differentiated malignancy. They will harbor a bad prognosis, fine. Okay, I'm not going to comment on this. We have seen this image like n number of times and you guys definitely know what is this. This is your lobular carcinoma of breast, right? There's no doubt, or doubt about lobular carcinoma of breast. Okay. You guys can write thesis on lobular carcinoma of breast. Fine. Only one thing, we, I told this already, I think that uh, the prognosis, uh, you have to read the question carefully. I hope they don't ask the prognosis of lobular carcinoma of breast because they it's a controversial statement even who says that i'm going to have two different types of view a short term prognosis is the best they have a better prognosis because they are most of the time erpr positive they have a better prognosis a long term survival is poor for simple reason they don't have e cadran they can spread fast right so just remember this this is how the prognosis of lobular carcinoma of breast is because they are ERPR positive. You can have hormonal therapy for them and they do have a short term better prognosis for sure. But long term since they can metastasize, they do not have a better prognosis. Fine. Okay. What is this? It's a gross finding. Sometimes gross gives whatever I want to see in microscopy. This is your breast mouse. That's breast. Uh, that's the easiest uh, way to diagnose this condition, right? Can you see this? I just want to imagine. Right? Let's imagination is the best thing. What we have, right? So I have circled the uh, three areas here. When I look at these three areas, am I right in saying that there is some opening there, right? There is some opening there, and it is something is compressing the opening. A uh, good observation, Santan. Yeah, you have a tail as well. It's a compressed duct, right? So I'm having a compressed duct. That's what my microscopy is about. It's fibroadenoma. I have fibro plus I have an adenoma here, right? I have fibro and adenoma. When the fibrous component becomes too much, the ductal component automatically will be compressed. So this is what my microscopy is about. When I look at the microscopy of a fibroadenoma, it looks the same. So these ones, which are the compressed ducts, grossly, they look like slit-like spaces. Okay, so this is my fibrous component and obviously is my adenomatous component, the epithelial component, right? So let's assume I'm going to do an FNAC on this, though I don't like FNAC of breast. If I'm going to do an FNAC of this, I'm going to put a needle, I'm going to remove this guys. I'm going to remove the compressed duct. Stroma doesn't come in an FNAC, only the duct comes because they are easy to pull out. Stroma is difficult to pull out obviously, right? So only the duct comes and I'm going to take the duct alone. It's It will resemble the same shape, right? It looks like a horn, a stag's horn. I don't know why they should have kept it a stag horn rather than calling it an antler horn sign. It's the same thing. At least we would have had the same name in uh, calculator as well, fine. Antler horn appearance in FNAC, okay. Here also, can you see the cells outside? You can see cells outside, right? Free cells. What are these cells? One is cohesive cluster. That's very, very important. It's cohesive. Cohesive cluster is good for me. I'll say it's benign. What cells are seen in the background? I'm pulling out a duct. I'm just pulling out a duct. So what happens is this myoepithelial cells get dispersed outside, right? These are all myoepithelial cells. The naked cells, the naked nuclei in the background are my myoepithelial cells. Yes, perfect. So I have epithelium, I have myoepithelial cells and the antler on saying, First diagnose for me is I won't call it a fibroadenoma. I'll put a benign proliferative breast disease. That's more than enough for me. That's more than enough for the surgeon to do a surgery. They're going to anyway remove the fibroadenoma. Post-operatively, when I get a histopathology, I'll report it as a fibroadenoma, fine. When I see when I see my epithelial cell, 100%, it's a benign proliferation, fine. I don't know, I have a cohesive cluster. I won't think of a disease also, okay. This appearance is called as a cut cabbage appearance. Diagnosis. I, it, I'm not sure if it looks like a cabbage, but it was termed as a gut cabbage appearance. Okay, it's fill lots, right? A tumor which can grow 10 centimeter. The first diagnosis for me is going to be fill lots. Fine, cut cabbage appearance will be there in fill lots. Okay. 
so fill outs in microscopy also you know i'm just going to run through it it is your classical leaf like pattern they do look like a leaf right they do look like a leaf i have lots of stromal overgrowth here which projects into the duct lumen so it looks like a leaf like pattern fine okay uh, previously we know lots of about genetics of uh, breast cancer we generally don't uh, fiddle much about uh, genetics of fibroadenoma or your fillots do remember this there is something called as a met 12 mutation okay this has been becoming little bit popular especially at least in fillots fine especially in fillots i am looking at this for the reason that uh, fillots when they have met 12 and telomerase inactivation they behave aggressively they become more malignant they recur faster so do know about this there's something called as a metwell mutation it's seen in benign prostatic hyperplasia seen in fibroadenoma as well as seen in your fillots fine do just remember about this if at all it comes it might help us okay so these are few things we have covered almost whatever is required for us in breast in imaging fine what is this i'll i'll go to only one finding here i just want to add here we have a stain called as a luxol fast blue the stain for myelin okay stain for myelin so i i'll mark two numbers here 1 and 2 tell me which is myelinated on a microscopy dure if it's on a microscopy fibroadenoma will have compressed ducts fillots will not have a compressed ducts what is one one is demyelinated areas right luxol fast blue it's blue it's blue in color so blue will be having myelination myelinated area 100% none of the demyelinating disorders are diagnosed by brain biopsy it's going to be diagnosed only by an mri it's this is a case of multiple sclerosis do you think they take a brain biopsy for multiple sclerosis no it's for understanding the disease yes i want a biopsy for research purpose yes i want a biopsy it's by imaging you're going to diagnose and by clinical information you'll be able to diagnose it right this is just to add on okay i have a stain called as luxol fast blue this is how a high power of luxol fast blue looks same okay blue color myelination right i'll show you demyelinated area you can easily differentiate it there right this is demyelinated area same stain lfb i'm not having any myelination at all right completely blue in color myelination because myelin are fibers you can look at them these are fibers right they look like your reticular fibers they are fibers and you have demyelination area as well just for the stain remembrance this might be required for us okay diagnosis this is a spotter i'll just tell you it's a brain biopsy that's it you should be able to pick this up spotter for brain biopsy spotter these are my clue this came in exam as well not crypto uh, not negri body uh, let's say that this patient is presenting with uh, spongy form encephalopathy perfect spongy form degeneration now diagnosis prions right so this is spotter you should be able to pick this up this is not a negri body fine uh, i think this you must have got confused the prion is also a protein defect right prion is nothing but a protein am i right in saying that prion disease is nothing but an uh, abnormal protein product yes so if an abnormal protein product can they have accumulation pink color accumulation they can right it's just an stored protein abnormally destroyed protein they have pink accumulation so these are nothing but prions accumulation they are not your negri bodies they also have accumulation and this will be pa is positive because they are protein they obviously will be pa is positive fine right? so don't go with the microscopy alone if i have lots of spongy form changes one diagnosis first i have to rule out is prions disease okay this is what the same thing was what you called as negri body this is a pa is positive prion uh, uh, inclusion seen in cruz disease this is from robins okay again biopsy is must for prions it, whenever prions comes it can transfer very faster for confirmation of prions i do biopsy under all control conditions this is not negri body this again pa is positive inclusion in cruz disease fine so in negri body to diagnose you will have a classical history of rabies a rabbit dog bite or any or organism bite and then hydrophobia if possible fine 
okay okay i'll maybe comment on this and i'll leave it in case of alzheimer's disease what do we see in alzheimer's disease we have two structures in alzheimer's disease right one we call it a neurotic block fine one we call it a neurotic block the other was neurofibrillary tangles okay call something as neuro yeah top protein only we have something called a neurotic block and we have something called a neurofibrillary tangles so how do i differentiate a neurotic block and neurofibrillary tangles is uh, the block in the center see this entire black color structure is the block in the center can you see an accumulation here right can you see an accumulation that's your protein accumulation right this is your protein accumulation when you do a stain it look neurotic block will have center amyloid deposit okay right they'll have a center amyloid deposit that's how a neurotic block is going to look fine but on the other hand when i go for a neurofibrillary tangle the tangle looks like a flame i'm sure you must have seen images of neurofibrillary tangle right that's one of the normal images uh, common images shared for us they do have something flame like protrusion right so they do look like this you have a cell in the cell cytoplasm amyloid is uh, extracellular or intracellular amyloid is extracellular right so my neurotic block i'm not having any cells it's a deposit here right it's an extracellular deposit right so it's an extracellular deposit here i'm having neurofibrillary tangles these are neurofibrillary tangles like you guys said in bilchowski screen i can look at these tangles it can be it can be very very prominent here right right you can see them again this is my cell and you can see them like a flame okay in your bilchowski stain perfect okay so both of them are possible you should be able to differentiate a uh, neurofibrillary tangle and a neurotic block right uh, if given an image i'll all these images are from robins only okay look at this image i have two of them here one in red color one in blue color tell me which is neurofibrillary tangle tangles contain top protein right this is my neurofibrillary tangle right you can look at the flame this is my neurotic block block will be kind of irregular neurofibrillary tangle will look like a flame fine should be able to pick this up okay fine so these are required for us if again alzheimer's biopsy is not done for clinical diagnosis it's for research pu purpose mainly they are not they are asked the genetic levels of alzheimer's microscopy is not come in question if it comes you should be able to differentiate a blocks and a tangle fine okay so there's a few things i want to discuss just one more thing i want to discuss uh, let's see okay diagnosis we'll just stop with this fine diagnosis it's a tumor what pattern i don't want anything else just tell me the pattern this is my small round blue cell pattern right medulloblastoma i can call it a small round blue cell pattern if it is in the cerebellum posterior for some as you can call it easily medulloblastoma right just a small round blue cells that you will accept almost every small round blue cell pattern sure i will try some there fine almost in every small round blue cell pattern we do have one more finding called as rosette right this is small round blue cells that's a pattern for me rosettes will be help helpful for me for diagnosis right we have we do have few types of rosettes look at this when you have a rosette in a biopsy image it's difficult to identify it is a rosette you must have drawn like this where you must have put a beautiful flower it looks like a flower when we draw but here you have to pick up the rosette rosettes will be in between my small round blue cells all these are rosettes do you have a lumen here i don't have a lumen entirely neuropil in the center so this is like you guys said this is homer right rosettes fine this is a homer right roset no lumen neuropil in the center and homer right roset perfect this pseudo roset obviously fine we we'll go to the next image ah it's written in the corner can i see a lumen here yes can you see a pink color as well yes and i'm seeing cells so i'm seeing a lumen a pink structure and cells so this is a true roset this might flexno wintersteiner rosettes fine you have flexno wintersteiner rosettes where do you see them you see them in your retinoblastoma fine 
So you have to pick up the rosette because rosette is going to help me in diagnosis because I have many, many differential diagnoses, so more blue cells. Here, it might help me in diagnosis, fine. The third one, this is a classical rosette. Look at this. This is, this is the only one which actually looks like a flower, looks like a rosette, right? I have only a lumen and all these are cells surrounding the lumen. This is your true, it's a very, definitely a true rosette as an ependymal rosette, fine. It's a true ependymal rosette. Only these three rosettes are diagnostic. Append it's true ependymal rosette seen in ependymoma, obviously, right? The next rosette is just for namesake. We call it a perivascular pseudo rosette. This is not required for me. We'll ignore this part. This can be seen in Ewing sarcoma, medulloblastoma, ependymoma, anything, fine. This is perivascular pseudo rosette. It's not going to be helpful for me for diagnosis. Just a non-specific finding, fine. Okay, so those three rosettes are required for me. A small round blue cell with homorite rosettes in the brain, I'm going to call it a medulloblastoma. Small round blue cell with homorite rosettes in the adrenal gland, neuroblastoma. Small round blue cells with flexner intestinal rosettes in the eye, retinoblastoma. Small round blue cells with true rosettes, ependymoma, right? My diagnosis is based on small round blue cell and the appearance of the rosettes and different, different structures, right? So you can easily diagnose all these rosettes. This is a very, very non-specific one. I'm not including it. You can see them in ependymoma, medulloblastoma, neuroblastoma, even in Ewing sarcoma, right? You can see this in many, many conditions, okay? So this is the only thing which you want to see in uh, sinus tumors. Other sinus tumors you guys know, I definitely you know about pseudo parasitic appearance in glioblastoma, veroke bodies, has been discussed many, many times, right? Someone posted in the telegram for, uh, I don't have it, fine. Someone posted in the telegram for uh, your Antony, Antony B pattern, I'll share the image. A is hypersolar, more blue color, nucleus. B is hypocellular, you have, and in uh, A we have Veroke bodies in Schwannoma, fine, okay. See you by night, let's see. Today our target for almost every poll should be greater than 90%. Okay, see you at 10 p.m. Till then, bye-bye. Okay, see you guys, if you have any doubts, do like me. The perivascular is pseudo, it's, it's there in the name, right, Madhu? Perivascular pseudorosit. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.